Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Josh, and today we're going to take a look at another C Sharp 7 proposal. So the feature that we're going to look at today is called local functions, and I'll take you through sort of the, the basics of local functions, how they compare to existing C Sharp features, um, and then some of the things that might change in the specification before the decision is made to either uh, incorporate this into the next version of C Sharp or cut this feature. So the, the easiest way is just to start to show it off. So local functions are basically functions inside of functions. And I know that sounds strange, but I guess as uh, C Sharp becomes more and more of a functional language, you can never have too many functions. So we've got an increment function inside of our main function here, and we can interact with that like you would expect. Like it's like a regular function that we can call, we can pass in variables to, uh, it'll run that code, that sort of stuff. Um, like regular functions, we can give it things like default values. So now we don't have to pass in this six. Or we can use named parameters, for example. So I think in IntelliSense here, if I don't mess this up, yeah, you know, you've got this named parameter to choose from, and you can pass in, you know, values specific for each parameter if you had many of them. So, so that's sort of the, the advantage of, or the, the basics of them. Uh, no one else can call this function. It's local, like a local variable uh, to this main method. Um, but this is still like a pretty simple example and, and not enough to justify this feature. So let's look at some of the examples that they do give uh, in the GitHub repo. Um, we'll look at creating a Fibonacci series kind of thing. So we'll uh, make a fib function. It'll take an n. And you'll notice uh, in this example, we're using the uh, new uh, expression bodied member syntax. So we're not, you know, using the curly braces and a block. We're just sort of doing this all in line. Fib, and I think it should call n minus two. And there you have it. There's a, a basic, you know, not efficient Fibonacci series uh, calculation, and we can call this var y is equal to fib pass in like seven or something like that. Console.write this, we'll do console.read key so it doesn't die on us and we can run this. And it'll go ahead and compile using the new local function stuff. This is all available on the uh, futures branch um, of Rosin and you can see here we've got our output here. Um, so, so if you wanna you know, test these things out, you, you, this is all public now, you can, you can give it a shot if you want. So we'll kill that. Um, you know, not, not a crazy advanced example, but this example starts to show some more interesting things about local functions. Like, for example, we've got this fib0 local that's being used within our function, so it's sort of being, like, closed over. Um, and then we've got some recursion going on. So this fib function is calling itself, which is another interesting aspect of this, this proposal. So if you're like me, you saw even an example like this, and you thought, that's great, but don't, like, inline delegates and lambdas already do all of this? So let's take a look at those C-sharp features. Action x is equal to lambda. And now we can start, you know, uh, almost like a local function, we can start writing statements inside of here. So hello, you know, we can close over variables as well, fib, fib0. Um, but one thing we can't do, at least right now, is have recursion. So we can't call ourselves, we can't call this x from within like the definition of x. Uh, if you want to support recursion, you have to do something a little weird. Uh, you have to declare this x, make it null, and then essentially change the, the meaning of it on the next line. And now you can use it. Um, so that's kind of ugly, kind of a, a check mark in the a win column for local functions because they don't have to deal with this kind of weird stuff. Um, but not necessarily enough still to justify the feature. But there are some other benefits here that we can get from comparing these two. So, you know, if you've got a delegate like this action, um, there's overhead when you create the delegate, you have to uh, allocate um, an object for that delegate, which means, you know, it goes to the heap. Um, there's also some performance overhead in invoking delegates. They're not quite the same as invoking methods. Um, and then when you close over variables like this, uh, a class gets created in the background um, that sort of this variable lives within. So you have to allocate for that class as well. So that's, you know, two allocations and some overhead to invoke these things. By contrast, local functions, um, you know, there's no uh, 
delegate to allocate with a local function. It's just a function that you invoke in line. And there's also no overhead with invoking it. It's just a regular function that you call. Um, and then one thing that's pretty cool um, is that when you close over these variables, they're not allocating like classes for these things to live in. They allocate a struct and then they pass in the variables that you're closing over as I believe um, ref parameters to that struct. I'm not 100% certain on that because um, there's a site online where you can you can take C# -sharp 7 code and see the IL for it, but it doesn't work on the futures branch right now. So I can't like test this out and look at the IL. Um, but that's that's based off the discussions that I've seen on GitHub and what I've heard from talking to people on the Roslyn team is that you won't have any allocations most of the time. Uh, you can get into some complicated cases apparently, or if you assign this. Uh, this function to a delegate, then you're going to have all those those problems. Um, but if you just use them like this, you know they're cheaper to use. So that's that's another win for them. I'm not sure how big of a difference that's going to make if like delegate invocations, like inline delegates, were like a huge bottleneck in you know any application. Um, maybe people use C# -sharp differently than I do. But at least in my code, I've I've never run into any problems that were where this was 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 what was killing us. So what are some other things? So another thing that you might like is that um, since this is just like almost like a regular function, we can use generics with it, which we can't with uh, those delegates. So we can do like, let's make uh, an example. The IntelliSense isn't quite there, so uh, it doesn't like when I use like T. Um, but that's because they just haven't had a chance to, uh, to implement it yet because the spec hasn't even been finished. So... So, you know, a very simple function using generics. We can show how, you know, we can invoke this with new object. We can invoke it with five. You know, we can pass whatever we want in there. It accepts all these types. Um, and we can change that. You know, we can restrict that. We can start to uh, put conditions on that where T, oops, not Y, where T is like a struct. And I think one of those will go bad. Yeah. So it doesn't like, um, doesn't like it when we do it that way. So that's like another another win there. You can use um, generics and have constraints on them, and uh, you can't do that with with delegates or inline delegates today. Um, but one of the more motivating examples, or sort of one of the ones that started to win me over, was actually this one that came from I think it was GitHub issue three nine one one, if I remember correctly, uh, where they went through their design discussions. And they gave this example. So, so this example here, this, this uh, filter function, takes uh, some kind of collection and it applies a predicate over that collection and decides like, you know, filter against this uh, predicate. Um, and, and it does so lazily. So one thing that was kind of a pain in the past is that if you sort of did this the naive way, you tried to implement the same method, um, you might not catch uh, nulls in your, um, that, that have been passed into your, your function until someone like iterates over the collection for the first time or they call to list on it or something like that. Um, you really want to, when you create this filter function uh, for the first time, you want to validate the arguments right away. And that's what local functions allow in this case is when we uh, call filter, um, we immediately check and validate the arguments and then we save sort of the lazy part for afterwards. So now we can return this iterator and it can all happen lazily, but we can do all of our um, you know, fail fast checking immediately, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, you could still, you know, with two methods or something like that, you could mimic or get the same behavior as this, but it's a, it, it's, it works well, it looks nice, um, it reads nice. That, that's kind of a, a benefit I'd say for, uh, for local functions and one of the more motivating examples for me. So um, that's my thought. I still don't know 100% sure, like I'm not 100% sold on the feature yet. Every feature that comes into C Sharp, you know, it, it better have a really good reason for ex existing. And I'm not 100% sold that like the performance is going to be changed enough. Uh, maybe I don't understand the feature. I've only looked at this for, for like uh, a couple hours today. But, but that, that's where I stand. I'm still not sure about it. Um, so th some things that might change before they make the decision on this function um, or on this feature are like, uh, well, well, let's look at a limitation that exists now. Um, when you have this, this, these functions, they can only be called um, 
you know, after they've been uh, declared. So you can't, before fib has been declared, call fib from up here. Although it did show up in IntelliSense, I saw that. Um, but, but you're not supposed to be able to call it um, from up here. So, you know, some people, they see that and they're like, well, you know, I want mutually recursive functions. So if I have fib1 and fib2, and I want fib1 to always call into fib2, Oops, and then I want the other one to call into fib1, then I'm going to get problems because how on earth am I ever going to get fib1 or sorry, yeah, fib1 able to call a downwards like into a function that hasn't been declared yet? And I can understand their argument, and people do want this, like they have uh, said that they want this functionality. But you sort of start to get into this um, this weird state when you allow a feature like that because. What if we declared uh, a function f or something like that? And let me just look it up here. Um, actually, let's declare a variable. Int x equals, actually, equals nothing. So it's just the default. Let's make a function for f it takes some variable, and then it just overrides that value of x. Yeah, sets that. Um, so that's that's great. But now what if, you know, we want to be able to call this before it's invoked. Well, let's just call it up here, f of like 5 or something like that. So what's going to happen here is our code will execute. We'll run f of 5. We'll assign x a value of 5 before we've even like got into the declaration for it. Um, and that seems like a bad thing, like something you probably don't want in your language. Um, it sort of starts to get a little weird to reason about these things. And, and this might be like a relatively easy mistake to make if you didn't fully understand what was going on in all your local functions and whatnot. So, so that seems like a downside to me. Um, maybe even enough of a downside that I would say they shouldn't do it. Um, C Sharp has long had this, this tradition of having like this pit of success where you guide your developers to sort of fall into this pit and things just work for them and you make it hard to shoot yourself in the foot. Um, maybe the trade-off will be made for one of the first times where we give people more power. Um, you know, that's sort of the trade-off that languages like C, like systems languages have made historically is that they wanna give people more power and you can shoot yourself, you can blow your whole leg off if you want. Um, I, I kind of hope they don't. I, I, I like the pit of success approach that C Sharp has stuck with so far, and it'll be interesting to watch this to see uh, how the decision is made. But that's local functions uh, in a nutshell. Um, I'll put up a video probably at the beginning of this playlist showing you how to get the futures branch uh, up and running, or at least one branch that has this feature so you can play around with it too. Um, thanks for watch, watching and uh, let me know if you have any, uh, if you spotted me and make any mistakes in this video because there's a lot of stuff here that I'm not intimately familiar with. Um, so I, I'm more than happy to put annotations and corrections up. Thanks for watching.